Hi, this is Randy Hexter from the Atlanta Institute of Music, and today we're going to talk about EQing a kick drum to get the fully produced sound that we're after. The DAW I'm using today is Digital Performer 7 by Motu, and we have recorded a basic drum set, kick, snare, and overheads as an example. I'm going to solo the kick drum track, and then we're going to see what we can do to give it the sound we want. First, the kick drum was recorded on the inside with the typical AKG D112, probably the most popular kick drum mic. And uh, we're on the way to a good sound, but there's some things that don't sound great when you mic on the inside of a kick. But let's look at how we can fix that. Now, the EQ I'm using here is a, a uh, channel strip plugin called Track Plug 5, and this is by Wave Arts. Right now, I have a flat EQ curve. Nothing at all. Let's listen to the raw track. All right. Now, right off the bat, there are two things that are popping out as problems with this kick drum sound. One of them is a general mid-range boxiness, typical of this type of situation. And there are two kind of pitched artifacts in here that uh, really ring out. Now, what they are is artifacts of the microphone being inside the drum, picking up internal reflections back and forth in the shell. And you can hear them as cowbell-like ringing. Now, these sounds typically don't get outside the drum because they pass sideways back and forth across the drum rather than lengthwise from the drum. So let's find them first. Uh, I'm going to create a parametric band, and I'm going to set it to about a tenth of an octave, and I'm going to dial around until I hear the pitch. Now, on the keyboard, I can hear it somewhere in the 400 to 450 area. Right about there. Now you'll notice when I boost that, that when I hit the right frequency, it's going to ring very strongly. If I move it off, notice that it, it doesn't sustain and ring the same way. listen for the second one. I'm going to add another band, and I'm going to set it again to around a tenth of an octave. This one here, a little bit higher. Somewhere about there, right? Now again, I'm going to tune around until I make it ring out think they weren't there. Let's turn off the EQ and listen to the difference. You can really hear that chord. Something like that. Now, re-engaging the EQ. Now we're still left with the sound of the mid-range boxiness, so typical of close micing a kick. So let's add another band, but this time we're going to keep it wide. We're going to even set it to about an octave and a half. And we're going to center it around, say, 300 hertz, somewhere in here where we hear this. gives us the tightness that we're looking for. Now you might say, I'm already EQing those bands with the narrow bands, but this is different. And those narrow bands will still be deeper than this one. So, somewhere in that area. Now let's compare our original sound. Now, Occasionally, there's also somewhat of a flappy uh, beater sound. The beater sound people usually want is somewhere in this 5 kilohertz area. But usually below that, in the 1 to 2 kilohertz area, we might end up with a kind of a papery sound. And that might sound a little bit better. Bringing out the natural click of the beater and getting rid of the papery flapping sound at 1.5 kilohertz. Here's our unequued sound. sound. More of what we're looking for. 
Notice we haven't messed around at all with the fundamental pitch. Most of the time there's plenty of that, unless you have a really, really inferior microphone, you're going to have enough of that bottom. And if you start boosting the bottom of the kick drum, it might start fighting with the bass guitar or other low instruments. Impact and fullness, rather than a big boom, is usually what we're looking for. So again, the raw track. And now, the EQ'd track. So, thanks for watching. Hope you, hope you found that helpful. We'll see you next time.